it is fortunate for us to have a pandemic today. I would not be surprised if a lot of you raised an eyebrow upon hearing my opening statement. Some of you might even utter admonishments towards me for such a seemingly callous, apathetic, or even outrageous remark. Well, I cannot blame you for that, and I would definitely react the same way. That is, without fully understanding the context of what sounds to be a contemptuous remark. Anyway, before things really get out of hand, allow me to explain what I really mean by my opening statement. It is fortunate for us to have a pandemic today. You see, the word that I want you to put a significant focus on is on today. Yes, indeed, to have a pandemic today. Well, of course, having a pandemic, particularly a widespread and deadly one, is truly dreadful one regardless of when in time it had occurred or would occur. However, when I stated that it is fortunate for us to be having pandemic today is based on the context of how gravely a different scenario we would be having if we had faced this global health crisis in a different time period, even perhaps only about half a century ago. To expand on this view, the present day conditions and level of development achieved so far by our modern society make us considerably fortunate to have encountered a pandemic today as compared to what it could have been if we were living in previous times in our human history. To begin with, the World Health Organization has defined a pandemic as the worldwide spread of a new disease. In his article today, in Medical News Today, Tim Newman mentioned how pandemics play a role in shaping human history throughout the ages, and that despite of its devastating nature, these are nothing unusual. Similarly, Brian Walsh of BBC stated that COVID-19 marks the return of a very old and familiar enemy, and that throughout history, nothing has killed more human beings than the viruses, bacteria, and parasites that cause disease. At this very moment, we are facing the COVID-19 pandemic. At the very center of this global health crisis is the SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. Scientists believe that this new coronavirus originated in bats, moved into pangolins, and then entered the human system. The spread of the COVID-19 disease around the world is proving to be an enormous health problem with a huge and dire impact in the global economy as well. Thus far, the John Hopkins COVID tracker through the WHO dashboard has already reported around 13,800,000 COVID positive people with more than 595,000 deaths caused by the new coronavirus disease. The WHO advisory states that for most people, COVID-19 causes only mild illness. However, it can still make some people very ill but can be fatal with older people and those with pre-existing medical conditions such as high blood pressure or heart problems or diabetics. Although quite alarming, the COVID-19 pandemic situation today is a very far cry from how it had been several centuries and even only half a decade ago. To illustrate this point, I'll give you a rundown on some of the worst pandemics throughout human history. The plague, also known as Black Death, caused by Bacterium yersinia pestis transmitted through respiratory droplets.
killed between 75 to 200 million people, half of Europe's population from 1347 to 1351. Knowledge of bacterial infection was not known that time, so rodents freely spread the disease. Cholera or Blue Death Caused by the bacterium Vibrio cholera spread through fecal matter contamination of food and water. Toxin produced by bacteria in the small intestine causes the body to secrete enormous amounts of water leading to diarrhea and a rapid loss of fluids and salts leading to death. Killed more than 5 million people across Asia, Europe, and the United States from 1800s to 1930 due to lack of sanitation and proper hygiene practices. Smallpox caused by the variola virus spread through physical contact and respiratory droplets. Killed millions of people with three deaths per 10 people since the 3rd century to the 20th century. Through effective vaccine developed in 1796, lack of mass immunization programs caused the disease to continue towards the 1950. The Spanish flu or severe influenza caused by an H1N1 virus from birds that transferred to humans, spread through respiratory droplets. Killed between 50 to 100 million people and infected close to 500 million people, a third of the world's total population from 1918 to 1920. Absence of flu vaccines and medicines to fight influenza caused huge death toll and infection. As mentioned, the effects of these pandemics have been much graver due to several factors. One is that diagnostic techniques and tools for identifying the, these disease have not yet been developed or were at their earliest stages. Another is that medicines for treating or managing these disease, such as antibiotics, steroids, and anti-inflammatory drugs, along with vaccines pre preventing them have not yet been developed. Also, treatment and inoculation procedures have either not yet been established or were not widely implemented. Furthermore, factors such as socioeconomic differences and underdeveloped public health systems greatly affected the fight against pandemics today cramp and poor housing conditions together with widespread malnutrition prompt the quick spread and devastating effects of virulent diseases. In our present time, many of these social challenges and health issues have been solved or are being properly addressed by both the national government and international agencies as well with the contribution of private medical and health institutions and organizations. Our modern society's ability to deal with pandemics has been greatly enabled and strengthened with the many advances in medical technology and the establishment of collaborative efforts among national health agencies, international organizations, and private medical institutions and industries. For instance, the plague still exists today and afflicts low-income regions, particularly those in Africa. However, because of the improvements in medicine and hygiene, the disease no longer reaches pandemic proportions. Before antibiotics, the fatality rate for the disease was at 66 percent but by 1990 to 2010 modern medicine had significantly reduced it to 11 percent moreover the seventh and final cholera occurred between 1961 to 1975 caused by a strain of v cholerae called l tor However, the cholera pandemic was officially ended in 1990s as a result of international cooperation among the various countries.
countries affected with the efforts led by the WHO. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, our modern society has already faced several other pandemics and was able to effectively deal with them aided by vast improvements in information, treatment, diagnostic capabilities, and surveillance program. To name a few, the human immunodeficiency virus. HIV infection leads to the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, spreads through transfer of bodily fluids, killed more than 32 million people since the 1980s with 37.9 million more infected at the end of 2018. Still no cure nor vaccine, but the creation of antiretroviral medications helped HIV infected people to live long and healthy lives. H1N1 swine flu caused H1N1 virus from swine transfer to humans, killed only 12,469 people out of an estimated 60.8 million infected people with around 274,304 hospitalizations from 2009 to 2010. This flu pandemic was effectively addressed with strict quarantine and sanitation measure. Patients recovered with the help of modern medicine and treatment practices. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome the first pandemic of the 21st century. Caused by the SARS-CoV coronavirus, spread through respiratory droplets, only killed less than a thousand and infected around 8,000 people in 29 countries. Effectively dealt with through modern medical surveillance, isolation and strict quarantine measures on those infected by the disease. Indeed, we are fortunate to be facing pandemics in our time when we have the advanced capabilities and various resources today. Currently, there is a global fight against the COVID-19 pandemic participated in by various government health agencies and private medical institutions and being led by the United Nations World Health Organization. The primary role of the WHO is to direct international health within the UN's system. The WHO is in the forefront of the Solidarity Trial, an international clinical trial to help find an effective treatment for COVID-19. As of June 3, 2020, more than 3,500 patients have been recruited by over 400 hospitals spread around 35 countries. The interim trial analysis are monitored by an independent group of experts under the Global Data and Safety Monitoring Committee and the pharmaceutical undergoing clinical trials for safety and efficacy include the anti viral nucleotide analog remdesivir, systematic, systemic interferons, and in particular interferons beta-1a, the antiviral combination lopinavir or ritonavir, the anti-malaria chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine, and monoclonal antibodies interleukin-6 and interleukin-4. The another COVID-19 treatments being used currently are ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers for hypertension, heart failure, or renal disease, as well as the convalescent plasma. Other modern day tools against pandemics focus on medical and information technology, one of which is the COVID-19 tracker developed by John Hopkins University's Coronavirus Research Center, which is a website designed to help advance the understanding of the virus, inform the public, and brief policymakers in order to guide a response, improve care, and save lives. A similar resource is South Korea's 
COVID-19 Smart Manage System run by the country's Center for Disease Control and Prevention and traces the movement of individuals with COVID-19. The Korean CDCP informs the local public health center near the infected citizens' residence and the healthcare center sends the notification to the people who have come in contact with COVID-19 positive patients in order to have them tested or order to do self-quarantine for 14 days. Moreover, extensive testing is a crucial step in identifying the state of the infection in the country. As such, several diagnostic tools have been developed, one of which is the CDC Influenza SARS-2 Multiplex Assay, which detects influenza type virus type A and B and the SARS-CoV-2. Another one is the point-of-care immunodiagnostic test for COVID-19 that was developed to help address the shortages of laboratory-based molecular testing capabilities and reagents and allow testing outside of laboratory settings. Both of these help public health officials to control the spread of COVID-19 and other coronaviruses in the community. Of course, the most powerful weapon against a pandemic is a vaccine. Right now, efforts are being made to develop a COVID-19 vaccine or COVAX. Currently, 75 countries have submitted expression of interest to COVAX facility, joining up to 90 further countries which could be supported by the COVAX advanced market commitment. This is primarily guaranteed the fair and equitable access for every country in the world. To date, there are now 7 out of the 9 candidates vaccines supported by CEPI already in clinical trials. In conclusions, pandemic have become a part of human experience both in the early past and extends to the modern period. The big difference from then to now is that the passage of time has leaned towards our favor as generations upon generations of our societies have slowly but steadily equipped us with progressively upgrading and newly discovered techniques, systems, and technologies alongside with social changes and developments that have bolstered our capabilities and enhanced our resilience to deal with previous and newly emerging pandemics. Indeed, we are very fortunate in our times. It is worth highlighting that the lessons learned from the past with regards to dealing with pandemics play a key role in our fight against pandemic today. The actions taken during the plague of doing self-quarantine and halting free travel across border and using handkerchief to cover mouth effectively reduced the risk of infection and transmission. The same was true for the Spanish flu pandemic where physical distancing was quickly implemented and on the cholera pandemic caused governments and citizens to enforce strict hygiene measures as well as the development of vaccine against smallpox that was used to inoculate the masses and significantly reduce the death toll. All these are what we are currently applying now in our fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Indeed, we are fortunate to have the pandemic today. If the people who have suffered the source of the Black Death in that time had the same general access to medical treatment, a clear understanding of the nature of the disease and pathogens, a more responsive government, and better nutrition as we do today, then perhaps the plague would not have been as devastating as it had been. We must always remember that pandemics do have an end. Our modern science and medicine, along with well-established medical and governmental institutions are strong forces 
that guard our welfare and guarantee our survival. We are fortunate not to be living in the Dark Ages, not even a mere century in the past, and instead live today because we are better armed than before to deal with a pandemic and any other global threat for that. Thank you for lending me your time. Wear your face mask, practice social distancing, and proper hygiene, everyone. Have a nice day.